I can promise you that poorly mumbling imitation Latin whilst shaking a stick won't get you anything. To become a real magician, you need to learn a complete system of magic. Oh, we've so got to delve into that. And indeed, this book on a planetary magic. Roll titles. Notice how I put the planets on the intro in the Kabbalistic order from the ground up. Ground being obviously Malkuf, Terra, Earth. Because that's where hopefully you're actually listening from. So I am going to repeat a little quote. I even, um, I even underlined it in pencil, right? Because I wanted to read this out. Because for a Llewellyn book, wow, this is some, this is some next level magic, right? This is a very important quote, something that I think everyone should remember. Not memorise, but the gist. Remember the gist of this, right? I can promise you that poorly mumbling imitation Latin while shaking a stick won't get you anything. To become a real magician, you need to learn a complete system of magic. Like the superstructure of a skyscraper, that system will support all of the magic that you practice to change and improve your life. This book says planetary magic is a complete system of magic. Eh, I kind of disagree with that. Planetary magic is something that most people would consider to be a complete system of magic but at the end of the day is there such a thing as a complete system of magic no therefore planetary magic is not a complete system of magic it is an almost complete system of magic it is absolutely brilliant and greatly underestimated considering it has been around for thousands upon thousands of years and forms the basis of the stepping stone system for ascension through the Western mysteries. This book, despite being published by Llewellyn, ain't all that bad. I ain't gonna go so far as to say you should rush out and buy it, because this ain't a book review and we ain't reviewing books here. Instead, we're just gonna talk about planetary magic in general today. Now, magic with a K, yeah, it kind of denotes real magic as opposed to the uh, dynamo, David Copperfield, illusionary kind of magic, right? So there's a lot of people that dislike this whole putting a K at the end of it. It's a very ceremonial magician, a cultisty kind of thing. Personally, it doesn't really bother me. I've used the K at the end of the word magic, but I think that a lot of videos and such, when we talk about occultism and ceremonial magic and planetary magic and all that sort of stuff, will then go off on a long-winded talk about such things, like the K, like various planetary hours and stuff like that. So I figured if we can get past that super quick, then we can actually go on to something that's actually worthwhile talking about, instead of just the general crap that you hear about. So planetary magic, not all, not really a complete system of magic. Essentially, 
I've alluded to as being one of the stepping stones for the Western, uh, Western mystery system of ascension, of progression through magical practice and such. So stereotypically with many um, magical orders, covens, schools, that sort of crap, curriculums, you learn the elements, four, four elements, or five if you're Wiccan, um, and then you progress onto the planets, and then generally speaking, everything above that is considered to uberly secret, and they don't really talk about it. Some people talk about um, 12 spirits past the planetary realm, um, but most of it doesn't get alluded to. So I'm gonna set out the basic system of progression with planetary magic. Now, this book started, because that was literally the introduction, the, uh, sorry, the foreword for this book, we're talking about that. Unfortunately, <laughs> from that point kind of for the first couple of chapters, not too bad, but then all of a sudden, it goes mega dang here and start talking about correspondences. So the rest of the book basically is just, I don't know if you can see, Loads and 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 loads of correspondences for different things. Planets, seven classical planets and the like. Not really very good, right? If you want to learn planetary magic, one does not start memorising correspondences. That is what most people are taught, okay? Now, there was this kind of idea that went a little bit too far, okay? If you group similar energies together, for example, if we're talking about planetary enemy, uh, enemies, energies, maybe we take a planet. The first one in this book is correspondences of Saturn. So if you take a load of Saturnian correspondences, that is things that personify to a certain extent, or I would say sum up or like Saturn, very Saturnian energies, then what you'll do is putting those all together on a table, you look at the, the, the table, you look at all of the stuff there and you start to work with the stuff. And then what you do is you start to do this thing called recognizing patterns, right? So when you've got a bunch of stuff, you start to notice, oh, a lot of these things are very similar. I can kind of see a common thread in amongst these things, right? What you're supposed to do is recognise that, be able to tell the energies and then go and look at another planet and see another common thread between the energies associated with the various things that it's associated with. What unfortunately has happened is people put all of these things on a table, nice side table, Chris, normally, isn't it? And then they bow down and worship it. They create altars, they create energetic centres but rather than actually work with the energy and try to understand it and sense it and take it apart, really like you're needing Dao, get in there. Instead, they tend to just go and create an altar and try and associate some god or goddess with it, or probably a bunch of them. That's a very bad practice when it comes to planetary magic, because planetary magic, at the end of the day, is almost like... A big part of a periodic table if you remember from a science at school the building blocks of creation the whole of creation are often summed up in many easy quick start guides one of those easy quick start guides in fact my personal favorite is the Kabbalistic tree of life I tend to use that all the time as a um, what would you call it abbreviation yes an abbreviation and those energies that exist on it are the energies and underpinning energies of creation. Obviously, there are other things that are not on the tree of life, but we don't need to talk about those because you kind of need to understand the basics in order to understand the intermediate or advanced, you see. I think that's where people go wrong, Chris, isn't it? Also, another yep. thing I notice is that they go wrong by thinking, if I memorise the stuff in this book, I know planetary magic, and that's not the case. I think that's the case of uh, if I go and get a book from the library on a yoga and I read the book, 
Does that mean I now am a master of yoga? No, because you can't stretch for shit, can you? <laughs> but I've got, I've got a certificate from the uh, Centre of Excellence that says. Yes, but you can't stretch for shit. That's what we need to remember. We need to remember that just doing the book, learning, memorising, does not mean that you really, truly are getting any real benefit out of it. Because the yoga is a very important part of it. Actually, the breathing. A secondary part of it is actually the, the stretching part, I know. But most people go to it and gravitate towards it because they think of the stretchy part. And then they learn the benefits of the breathing part afterwards. Or it's all very magical and mystical, isn't it? Especially when you're using it to bet on fucking singing bowl. Don't start me. So, planetary magic. A simple system. You only need to know seven. Seven. Seven planets. But there are more planets in the solar system. Yes, I know that there are more planets in the solar system. But you focus on the seven. Because you see, this whole planetary la magic level thing is kind of like a computer game. You start off on the level one, and it's fairly easy to kill the bad guys. But when you get to like level 10, 11, 20, 2500, it starts getting super difficult. And if you haven't built the skills up, going up those levels, you is dead, mate. As soon as you get on level 100, you're dead straight away. Isn't that accurate? <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe yeah, go sure. a bit crazy. You might not die immediately with a lot of this occultism stuff, but generally they tend to go a little bit doolally and crazy and then die not too long after. So, which planet do we start with? I'll give you a clue. It's not really a planet at all. Ooh. <laughs> if, you wrote, if you watched the, the intro titles, you would know that the first planetary... Sphere of influence, Sophia, would be Luna, Luna, the lunar realm, the astral, the house of the moon. Funnily enough, it's the one that's closest to Earth as well. It's quite close. Its influence can be felt all over the place, especially down there, and also in the A and E department upon a full moon. Definitely <laughs> go to the A and E department on a full moon. It's like a different world. It really, truly is. Crazy. So, Chris, the moon. We've talked about this whole astral thing and stuff before and the energetic bodies. I'm going to reveal a little secret for them. Because if we're talking about planetary magic being one of the, just one, 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 singular, one, because there are more than one, there are many, Right. If this is just one of the ways we can look and describe the underpinning energies of creation, just this universe, we won't go too far outside of that now, then there are, of course, other ones. But because this one is one language for us to have a conversation with and get it understanding in your head how it works, moving through that and understanding that will give you power and understanding of said universe. Okay, and you need to do that in a kind of like a logical order. And because these are the underpinning energies of the universe, and you're part of the universe, then it does stand to reason that they are a part of you also. And exploring them, you will explore parts of yourself. And I don't mean that from a hippy-dippy psychologist perspective. I mean that from an actual structural perspective. They form aspects energetic parts of you and you and you and yeah i'm just pointing randomly <laughs> to the camera because they might not all be in the middle you know so chris what do you make of that isn't that some big occult secret i don't think it is i think gripper talked about it hundreds of years ago but it seems to be a big occult secret that no one seems to be talking about <laughs> i don't think it's all that big it's not big but unfortunately, to very small-minded people, and very small people, it is a big, massive concept. There are so many massive concepts that we'll probably just be randomly revealing in this Planetary Magic episode. Because the people that spell magic with a K, they like to uh, 
keep all their secret little clubs, I think, Crest, these kind of higher level mysteries. And I can completely understand if they're trying to keep secrets from people that do not deserve the profane, as they say. Yes, muggles, mundanes and that. But eh, there's a balance in act, I think. I think that there's a danger with keeping information from people that are ready for the next step and need that information to get to the next step. What you need to keep the information away from is the people that are going to misuse it. And no, I don't mean using Mars and Saturnian spirits and spirits energies and stuff to go kill people. We don't care about that. You can go and be a bad boy or girl if you want. What I mean is if I was to give you this book and you were to start a memorising the correspondences, you're getting input memorising answers to questions. You're not actually doing the whole journey to self-discovery. If I said to you, what muscles does the downward dog work? And you memorised in the book what muscles the downward dog works. You're not really fully understanding it because you're supposed to understand how to do the downward dog physically. And if you just go by a description in a book, those downward dogs, they could be looking really rather unusual, particularly with the description of the books and such. I've known people when they've got martial arts books and stuff like that and they've been taught a move from a martial arts book that explains it and they aren't doing the move at all because they've misunderstood. I'm sure you can understand from textiles as well, can't you? If you described how to do some textile work, some people would be like, what the fuck did you just say? I don't understand it. Other people would just give it an attempt and it would end up just being a tangled web of crap. Certainly. Mm. Sorry, I'm not ignoring you, Liam. I'm just trying to get the the Facebook to play games, the right game. You're not supposed to be playing your Facebook games at the moment, Chris. No, I was trying to share this on Thoth, Thoth Witchcraft. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. But I've done it now. It was doing things that I shouldn't be doing. Because it was trying to predict needs I don't have. Hmm. Sorry. So, so. The balance within planetary magic because there is a balance okay and there is a stepping stone logic to it because before you run you need to understand how to walk and generally most people learn how to crawl before they can walk because these things you know it is quite difficult to run if you cannot walk it makes sense doesn't it right that's why you go through and understand the planetary planets we just basically use the planets and say planets i mean we're actually talking about not necessarily the big rocks and gases and stuff that's orbiting the solar system we just use that as a poetic expression and understanding because we can look up at it and we can say oh look it's a pretty map you know oh i understand that the mysteries of it are reflected as above so below you can look at something else and you can see great mysteries within yourself reflected in that other thing because we are all interconnected. That sounds like some sort of new age Deepak Chokra kind of crap, doesn't it? But it is kind of true. It is kind of true. So the first one you need to deal with, ideally, is the lunar realm. That's mastery of the dream state, mastery of the psychic work, mastery of astral projection, all of that. Because guess what? It's almost like a vehicle. If you want to get to another realm, you're probably not getting in a spaceship to do that. You're probably going to use your astral body to get past the astral realm to get to the place where you're trying to get to. Therefore, you kind of need to understand the astral body. Now, if you cannot astrally project, some would say you don't bother dealing with the other planets. Instead, what we would say normally is, yes, we'll understand and work with all of those planets because remember, they are all a reflection of you. You are a part of them, they are a part of you and everyone is different. Therefore, everyone has a slight balance or unbalance within these planets. Some are stronger with certain planets than others, okay? So if we get 10 people, then those 10 people aren't necessarily all going to be greatly psychic. They're not all necessarily going to be naturally 
you know, that kind of I see dead people type psychic. They might not all be strong with the house of the moon. If you're strong with the house of the moon, if you're strong with the lunar stuff, then you tend to pick up psychic work naturally. In fact, it tends to be more like when you run the bath and you put the plug in and walk away. It bloody goes everywhere, all over the side and all that. In fact, some people are a little bit too psychic for their own fucking good and need to reel that in. They need to balance themselves out because they're too... Ooh, and it tends to screw them up, right? Other people are a little bit too Mars. Most of the time we get people that are either too lunar, and this is really funny, so pay attention to this, right? Some people, and most people either are too lunar, too mercurial, or too Venusian. Notice how those are the first three fucking stepping stones in the planetary system. It's funny that, that most people's imbalances or with one or more of the first three. And that actually this little triangle of hashtag manifestation, you need to balance in order to get to the next section. So if you are too a logical, a left brain and mercurial, you are gonna need to pick up a little bit of Venusian of throwing yourselves into that kind of thing. Now, all of this is mirrored. The spirits and gods and goddesses and such that are associated with these planetary, the planetary associations and stuff, are very much linked to one or more of the planets. Because if you look at the calculating mathematicians, ceremonial magicians, they're very mercurial. Their system of magic is very mercurial. If you look at the do lali arti farti people that just do it and don't understand how they've done it, they just felt the energy and it fucking happened, they're very Venusian. They're very much hey, in the country. Well, they are. I mean, it's chill. Are you saying that's wrong? <laughs> exactly. No, I'm just saying that that sounds like a judgment. No, it's not a judgment, but out of us, I'm probably a little more mercurial and you're probably a bit more Venusian. You know, it's natural. We all have our natural biases. I have a natural bias towards Mercury and Saturn. You know, it reflects. I have to push in different directions purposefully to balance myself. Otherwise I would probably end up probably go and do Lali. With the Saturnian Mercurials, they don't tend to go do Lali. That tends to be more of the lunar people. But still hmm. are we Just going to into a robot out? instead. Yes, beep. I'm a robot. Beep. Um, are we getting a bit ahead of ourselves? And does anyone have any questions? Because you can write questions, I think, on the comment section. I think it does pop up. Um, so the planetary magic and the different ones, you can look at the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, or you can look at most of these books, and it actually puts it in the order that is relevant. Gives nice little correspondences that are completely useless to people that like to collect correspondences. To the people that like to solve puzzles, these correspondences are amazing because they are in fact all puzzles. Why is that associated with that planet? Rather than stick it on your altar and say, because the book told me, think of it as a puzzle. Find out the answer and you will learn something about that thing, that object, plant, spirit, whatever it is. And you'll also learn a little bit about the planet as well. Now, you've uh, gone through an interesting approach to uh, getting to know all of the planets in a logical order. You did a whole soap opera, wasn't it? Can you talk a little bit about that? Because yeah. that's the more psychic side of things, as opposed to using a kitchen canker or a side table and filling it full of jars and offerings and such. Mm. So the um, I didn't really want to create altars for all of them is basically what I didn't want to do, which is the slightly more um, Mercurial Liam method of essentially discovering all those. Um, I, I've kind of come to planetary, understanding it through the planetary lens, shall we say, much later in life. So mine was all, I would always look at it from a very, uh, you know, Uranus point of view and, and looking at it as an entire um, zodiac and then breaking it down beyond there. What I hadn't realized really, obviously, that there is a, a slightly, uh, you know, simplistic 
way of doing that, which is the um, the Kabbalistic way. Um, so for me, it was it was how can I find a way to put that into my system in order to actually explore and understand them. And then, yeah, so I did it from an astral point of view, um, kind of thinking bottom of the tree, um, the most obvious way to look up at the planets is is through that astral lens. So, you know, I did it as a, a dream exercise. Um, as one is strong with the astral uh, and just decided that that would be the best way to see it and how it manifested was as a series of soap operas over the courses of weeks where each night had its own theme shall we say and the characters got more and more complicated as the weeks went on um and some nights i really struggled to dream um for the first few weeks and slowly they popped their way into the other parts of the story um so whereas Liam's kind of strong in Mercurial, uh, which I don't I don't have a problem with. I, I suppose my weakest is Mars, not because I'm quite, ha you know, anything against warring with people. I'm quite good at that. What I tend to do, though, you don't like to get is, your hands dirty and Mars is all about I don't like to get my hands dirty. <laughs> so I prefer to do it through the system, which is why I'm stronger in Jupiter than I probably am. Um through the mars aspect of that um but that in itself probably tells you a little bit about how you should be looking at the tree they are in that position for a reason um and where the balances and offsets are what you'll probably find is that moment you think you're strong in the astral um you'll suddenly realize that actually i'm looking at the astral through a venusian lens or i'm looking at it through a mercurial one rather than as a pure astral kind of lunar um also you know paying attention to these which again might be a going too quick and you may have planned that differently liam but actually looking at them as pillars um and actually seeing what that is a great way of showing you um but yes you see you used to cheat and people don't relate to you, Chris. The beginners <laughs> don't relate to you because you cheat so often. And what they try to do is emulate you. So when you're the CEO in Uranus, right? Mm. And you've got all of your board room members, all of your directors, you've got the head of HR over there, got the head of operations, got all of these people. And you're just saying, I want this to happen, this to happen, this to happen. And they go off and do it. That ain't what? A lot of these people are doing you see a lot of these people are trying to work from their bottom minimum wage job to get up to the position of ceo you were just born in that position that's cheating chris no it's, see, it's unfair really isn't it right. it's un unfair so what you've actually done is if you've ever been in one of these very left-leaning big organizations where they get the directors to go and pretend to do a hard day's work you know where you've got the directors of the international shop walmart or something like that and they go and they stack shelves for an afternoon that's kind of what you've done with your soap it's pretty much it's like oh i'm gonna go just to be part of one of the people so i know what it's like i'm gonna go and spend an afternoon going to work and stacking the shelves in one of our stores and then i'll go back to my comfortable office and forget all about mm. it and when i go and do that i'll probably cheat because if it's too difficult no one ain't gonna turn around and have a go at me not for a stack in that shelf i'll have some other person that's employed to come behind me and straighten all of those little cans of beans up because it didn't do a good job <laughs> i did i did have to hide all the photographs of me obviously otherwise people would know where i was from <laughs> it's like secret millionaire that program isn't it <laughs> <laughs> undercover boss or something like that i think it is yeah undercover boss well, I thought I thought it was a really good expression. How else would I have done it? So the main focus of planetary magic is to get you understanding the filing system that is planetary magic, the planetary magical filing system. The Kabbalistic planetary magic filing system is a big thing in the Western tradition that loads of people talk about. Agrippa, all of these books, they generally just copy and paste it. Okay. Now, 
how you get to know the planets is probably where a lot of people are going wrong because you don't need to memorize any crap for it. There's a couple of things that steer people wrong. The first that I tend to say is the correspondence issue. And I say, no, don't look up any correspondences. Start thinking about the planet and ask it to show you a correspondence. <gasps> What do you mean, Mr. Liam? Ask it to show me. Yes, ask it to show you. Put something in your life that will come up and that will be the correspondence for that planet. And by understanding the puzzle, that puzzle of what the fuck is this thing and how does it relate to this spirit, this planet, this energy, that is a mystery that you will solve and then you become closer and closer with that planet. You will understand it, you see. Mm, interesting. The second one is when they try to pull in the energy of a planetary, mm. you know, because essentially it is a drawer, a drawer like a drawer in your office filing cabinet, which contains multiple files, multiple energy currents within that energy. Saturn, lots of things involved with Saturn. Yeah. Top drawer in the filing cabinet, lots of files in there, right? It's not just one file. There's lots of files. The top drawer is finance. So there could be bank statements. There could be corporate structural plan. All sorts of things. Forecasts, calculator, you know, the spare bank cards. All of these things that are related to finance. Coloured highlighters, tools. See, tools. They love the tools, don't they, these witches? Um, all these things could be relevant to this filing cabinet, this thing called finance much like lots of things are relevant to the individual planets. Now, people try to pull in the energy and not really have a clue what the energy is supposed to feel like or anything like that. So some will ask the energy. They'll take the sigil symbol of the planet. I just go for the standard ones. You know the most common ones being Mars with the little arrow in the circle and the Venus one being the circle with the little cross at the bottom. Yeah, male, female, they tend to use that as a symbol of. Um, there's lots of planetary symbols just go for the common ones and try to focus and use that as your your whispering walkie-talkie to the energies of those planets and invite them in pull them in some people what they'll do is they'll try to marry these correspondences up with planetary hours and such which is what i want to talk to you, talk about now because if you wanted to do something say i want to go and mess a bitch up that i don't like maybe it's a neighbor and I wanted to uh, really feel the heat. I might have used to have gone for fire, the element of fire, but now I'm gonna go and destroy her entire life and uh, use Mars for that, okay? I might use Mars. I wanna pull that martial energy into some kind of spell, probably a candle, because these bitches love candles, don't they? Um, I'm gonna make a Mars candle, and I'm gonna program it, tell it what to do, and it's gonna run on martial energy, Mars energy. I ain't putting my energy into it, I'm in challenging it. I am pulling Mars into me, and pushing Mars out of me into the candle, understanding what it's going to do. Okay, energy pulling in, programming, sending out, lighting the fuse, because the candle is basically a fuse, and watch the shit unmanifest next door to my neighbor right now people will be told oh do that during a tuesday because tuesday is the day of mars and oh mars just seems to be popping his little head in the earth on that day so you know that's the kind of thing just go for that why is that oh it's got something to do with astrology or something in it you don't need to know that you just need to open up the page that says planetary timings and it says tuesday mars i memorize tuesday mars okay now that works to a certain extent, but I'd say before you go and light your fuse, before you go and do that, why don't you, because you've got to learn them all, why don't you just use those days, because there's seven days to our week, seven classical planets, just use those as an exploratory phase, which I think is what you kind of did with your soap opera. You just took the moon on a Monday and you thought, I'm going to see if I can pull in some lunar energy today. Not because the moon only exists on a Monday because it only exists every day of the week, funnily enough. And uh, Mars and Saturn and Jupiter and all of these planets, they don't just disappear, right? 
when it's not their days. No, they're there. You can tap into that energy whenever you want. But when it comes to focusing and you're wanting a, a little, you know, program for learning these energies and you want to balance them out, you want to make sure that you're not just sticking with one all of the time, then that will help you do that. Now, a lot of the time, there is such a thing as energies that can be felt within the world, but that's vastly beyond the ability of most people to understand, because you can understand that from reading a book, you need to sense and feel it. And in order to sense and feel it, you need to move more with your psychic palette. And in order to do that, you need to actually do some actual magic. So I'm not going to even bother talking about that. One thing I am going to correct people with regards to planetary days, hours, there are 12 planetary hours in a day. Days are not the same length. As you'll notice, some days are shorter than others. Therefore, the planetary hours are not actually hours. They move. Might be an hour and a half or something. It really depends on the light level. Okay. Sunrise, sunset. Divide that into 12 sections. The first one being the day of the week. Lunar Monday. When the sun rises, it's the hour or section, I should say, of the moon. Okay, so there's an entire lunar section. Okay, there are various apps and things like that that you can get. But people do often mistake that. They think, oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait for 12 o'clock at night because 12 o'clock at night is the middle of the night. 12 o'clock at night isn't necessarily the middle of the night. The middle of the night is the middle of the night. If it starts getting light at half past 12, that ain't the middle of the night. You have to look at when the sun rises, when the sun sets, and look at the middle. We in the Western world don't understand this because we used a mechanised clocks and such. Back in the day, you would know when night was because it would be dark. <laughs> and this is where a lot of this because it's ancient comes from so just to recap if you're unsure get up at sunrise on the corresponding day and if you think I would never do that because people label us as super witches I used to do that and I have done that partly because I've got better things to do than just doing a spell work and magic all the time I also utilised this super special little technique, which is called sleep, do some work, sleep, <laughs> woke up, can't remember doing the work. Magical thing mm -hmm. when you have this idea of you wanting to let go of spells, because I used to wake up from my second sleep. You see this thing, first sleep, second sleep, is an ancient thing. My first sleep, my second sleep. What does that mean? 12 o'clock afternoon nap? No. It don't mean that we get up from the coal mines and go and have a nap and then go back to the coal mines, right? There was actually two sleep. Victorian thing, you'll have to do your research on that. <gasps> secret, but not really a secret. It's just things that have been forgotten because of the way we live Hidden our lives. Hidden in plain sight. Hidden in plain sight. Um, where else would you like to go? Well, I just, I just want to add a little bit to what you're just saying, just to kind of apply <laughs> um, the Venusian lens of mm -hmm. how you look at these things as opposed to the mercurial one yes. um Balance. is to look at them as lenses so you know you've got that whole day of lunar on a monday but as like liam said there are hours within that day you've got to remember there there is still that overhanging flavor mm. of moon of the kind of lunar energy throughout so it is a case of kind of going okay you know when you're then planning a spell working, you might want to actually consider, okay, on on uh, <laughs> on a Monday, you're going to want to then actually, well, I want to do it from an astral point of view, but what I want to do it is in a kind of constructive way. Um, therefore, you might want to use the lunar day, but the hour of, of Jupiter or the restriction of the day of the hour of Saturn, you might not want the entire flavour. So if you're going to break somebody up, for example, you're not going to ne necessarily pick a Friday where it's Venusian, because actually the best way to hit any kind of relationship would be trouble and strife. 
So therefore, you're really going to want to hit the Mars hours of that during the week, uh, depending on how you want to flavour that. I know I always use taste, but I can't help it. It's that kind of blending of flavours of kind of going, OK, well, I do want the overall Saturnine energy, but I want to come at it from this angle. And kind of when you start to think of the day as the lens, and then actually the specification of throughout that day as these beautiful little pockets of where all of those energies are available um, and just making sure that actually where is the most obvious place to direct yourself through and that would be one of the planetary hours as opposed to the day hmm. people don't necessarily think of people oversimplify planets and when you have to explain something then it is a good idea to, to oversimplify things however they don't tend to, to be worked with in their raw state so what you're talking about is combining planetary influences and planetary energies giving them a job like chris sits at the boardroom because he's the ceo of the company and he directs and he tells people when there's a project a serious project you could go to one department and say do that project i want to build a new store for my Walmart empire. Now, you've got to remember, you could go to operations and you can say, I want you to go and build a store. Or you could go to the project management department and say, go and build a store. But reality, think about that. That requires money, the finance department. That requires actual infrastructure, recruitment, HR department, all of these things. It involves all of these things. So really serious spell work and magic some people will tweak the little spider's web, will tweak one planet because they can tweak one planet. If you're wanting to fix an illness or a healing thing, all of that, the body, can be mapped in planetary influences. If you find a very martial, hard, um, inflammatory type of illness, then you need to balance that out. So you're going to potentially be doing some Jupiterian stuff with that you know there may be some things cancerous for example the growing of something you know cancerous growth is alive so you want to kill that destroy that but you also want to rebuild so that is a dual mars and jupiter spell healing ritual working okay combining of the planetary energies is big boy big girl stuff it's not really even big boy big girl stuff Unfortunately, nowadays, it's considered big boy, big girl stuff because most people have no clue when it comes to spell casting, ritual magic, or magic in general. Big boy, big girl stuff is when you cross the abyss back in the day. That was when you were considered, like, not a beginner anymore. Nowadays, people can't even fucking get close to that sort of stuff. So think about the energies, getting to know the energies, because then you will see in the lenses of those automatically you'll be like some kind of creepy weird thing with googly eyes you'll have a mars eye jupiter eye all of these stuff venus eye mercury eye all of these things you'll be seeing all at once you'll be seeing the energies that surround a person you'll be able to see when they're out of balance you'll be able to see the energy that's around a situation a thing a spell you'll be able to craft and pull those energies in in a perfect state of balance because our solar system is in balance What's in the middle of the solar system? The sun. Mm. Hey. Hashtag higher self much? No, most people don't understand this concept. But there we go. So that is some super basic planetary magic. I'd have liked to have gone into half decent stuff because this is the uberly, overly simplistic stuff, but it's still the stuff that people miss and do not understand. Okay. All of these things are balanced. When they say in the beginning of the book that planetary magic is a complete system of magic, and I say no, it's an almost complete system of magic, because there's things outside of the solar system, so it can't be. If you want to deal with stuff of a very, very far away, outside of creation, or at least this creation, then you're going to have to deal with other things. That planetary magical system don't help you with that, but it does help you become a master of this system that we're currently in. you got to think big, guys. Think big. Um... What shall we end on? I don't know what would be best because otherwise I could go too much into higher self and then the highest self and then we could go on to the extra planets and all that sort of thing. But I think that's too much for this. Well, first, 
first they need to go first they need to go and listen to the planetary yarns one a weaving on, planets podcast on, weaving the, no planets on the podcast because no you might now podcast. understand that a little bit better having now had liam's explanation of planets um, because obviously with that we just went straight into it and just started talking about combining planets um so now <laughs> Now you can kind of go back and start to reconsider those triangles we were talking about um, on that that particular podcast, which I think is still one of my favourites. Mm. Uh, I like it. It's one of my favourites. That and I like the chicken one. The chicken one was good. But I don't know if... Did the chicken one fail? No, no. That was the droids one. I did that enjoy that one too. One. These are not the droids you're looking for. That was that one. We need... We need to do a new version of that one. Okay, right. Sticking on the Kabbalah, because I've been doing some research this week because I went and fell down some hole. Um, it wasn't the one that I sent the archivist on, was it? Or I alluded um, to it. I don't think she's done it because I didn't assign it to homework. So I hope she hasn't wasted her time with it. But there's always the danger with the uh, different maps, many a map. Oh, uh, yeah. It wasn't that particular one, but it was another one published by them. Okay. Um, so I was I went down a a random hole um, in some kind of uh, medieval ma manuscripts, um, and they were talking about the elixir of life. You see, um, mm -hmm. but the question I was going to ask you is about serpents, because we're talking the the Kabbalic tree. Um, oh, well, those Hebrews do like do like to talk about their snakes. Um, so I was just wondering if you want to throw some light on that as a question. Hmm. Throw some light on that. Hmm. When you're talking about trying to understand the creation of the universe, when you say try to understand, that means you've got to make sense of it. Make sense of it. Process it and get it right in your own head which means putting it down on paper or something like that a schematic a schematic that a lot of people use in the western tradition is a thing that they stole from the capitalists which is the tree of life so the tree of life is a uberly simple yet extremely sophisticated because it's symbology and if a picture shows a thousand words a symbol can show a million pictures and that is one of those things that wait a minute that just, that shows every mystery that is in the entire system of creation that we're currently residing in, that we currently call home. And yet it's a super simple system. It's a super simple glyph, picture, symbol, right? But every mystery is there. You just need to understand how to unlock it and see it. And when you see it, you cannot unsee it. So the understanding of energy, directions of energy, how things interact with each other, tends to get used poetically when we're talking about in totality hierarchy we see movement when chris points his finger like lord alan sugar and says you're fired you're fired or set that shop up there deal with this deal with that you're seeing the top down and you, if you watched and did a little bird's eye view of all of these uh, directors reporting to Chris, who is the CEO, they'd all skedaddle off. They'd all go speak to their various mini-me's and minions. And then that would filter down. That's the filter down process. And something big's happening up here and it's all kind of filtering down. Going down energy. Such that also the opposite is true. Because on the ground, the higher ups don't necessarily watch does that mean they cannot watch no 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 it means that they ain't fucking interested in what happens in your one little shitty walmart store when they've got thousands of the fuckers right so what they rely on is they rely on an upward energy filtering upwards if there's a robbery in a store probably the people that were in the store at the time of the first to know that gets them reported up and up and up the food chain energetically speaking energy flows upwards and downwards snakes going up snakes going down the fiery sword of manifestation is what a lot of the western people refer to with the order of the capitalistic tree going down and the opposite order going up starting with 
I'll give it to you, shall I? I'll give it to you because you're on the earth, ideally speaking, currently. We start with terra, physicality, four elements, yeah, balance here, physical crystallized structure. And then we go to the lunar, astral, and then we pick up our mercurial body. I know the camera's kind of ran the wrong way. I won't point because that'll confuse people even more. Chris has got his little diagram though, but you can Google it. Oh, diagram. Yeah, there we go. So we go to um, Earth, to Luna, to Mercury, to Venus, to the Sun. People confuse that one. Solar self. Yeah. Then to Mars, then to Jupiter. And then we reach this weird little thing. And most people can't quite understand the weird little thing because it requires mastery of Saturn to get through that weird little thing. So most people will just substitute Saturn there because they don't want to fall down the universal plug hole that they call Pluto these days. <laughs> so they tend to put Saturn there, which you will see energetic balance there. So there we go, you've got your seven classical mysteries. There are other mysteries at the top that are way above your level of understanding, I'm afraid. Because if you understand seven, you don't need me to tell you the other ones at the top, do you? As for the Pluto thing, you stay away from that. I'm like your <laughs> mummy telling you not to hang around with those naughty boys at school because they're a bad influence. Don't mess with Pluto until you understand at least the seven classicals. And if you don't understand the elements, the four that are here, then I would start with those. <laughs> Okay, and then we'll move on from that. Um, anything else, Mr. Chris? I think we might have. I'll just check we have what questions. questions. Is it worth charging planetary stones if you can take it from within yourself? Why would you want to do that? I've charged planetary stones and crystals and the like and things like that to correct imbalances. So healing, for example, if you're trying to do work with a person, okay, but you haven't necessarily, you can't feed them potions and stuff because the doctor don't like it, so you've got to do distance work or something, then what I would personally do is I would directly interact with their energetic body that is affected. So if they've got some kind of disease like cancer, that's going to be in their martial, it's going to be a Mars kind of thing. I'm going to need to work with Mars, possibly to correct that. I might work with Jupiter as well, right? However, most people, because you would need to understand and be able to work with the lunar aspect first, you need to be able to actually project. How are you supposed to go and pluck out someone's aspect and interfere and do some psychic surgery past the astral realm if you can't even actually project beyond most people's capability unfortunately in the 21st century are we in the 21st century or are we in the 22nd i can't remember is the 21st, 21st isn't it? i always get those three mixed up i started in the 20th century because that was in the 1900s wasn't it that's it um and then what we do and we is, had a millennium liam a millennium, that whole thing with the bug that didn't exist. Remember that? Oh, that was brilliant. Brilliant, Egregore, whoever created that. <laughs> All the hysteria. Um, so when we cannot do the level and operate on the level that we need to operate on to do that psychic surgery, we can do physical things. So if you charged a specific energy that someone is unbalanced in and gave it to that person in the form of a crystal or a rock or a charm bag or something like that and they inter interacted with them, they're going to absorb it. Much like when someone's deficient in vitamin D, give them some vitamin D pills and it tends to correct the issue. Now you don't need to eat that little magically charged rock, it just needs to interact with their aura because their aura is what people kind of see as the energetic bodies. People's energetic bodies, at least the first few, are realistically the aura. Most psychics are absolutely terrible and don't even deserve to be called psychics because their ability is so unbelievably crap that they cannot understand. They just see colours. But what they can't do, because they're all colours overlap, they can't slice off a section and open it up. What they do is they look at the filing cabinet, 
there's all in a heap of mess on the floor and they do not see structure because they do not have a structured mind. But the people with a structured mind will look at that beautiful filing cabinet and they'll see the drawers with the labels on and then they'll open the drawer and they'll see the files with the labels on. So yes, is it worth charging planetary stones if you take it from within yourself? I would say that's a good idea. Anything that you feel retains that planetary energy, I think it's worthwhile keeping that fully charged up. Because if you're a professional witch or you work with other people that are not witches, particularly mundanes, you can then take that rock and just give it to them, right? Or you can take that, because the energies are always there. So you don't need to, like a battery, charge up spells. When we talk planetary magic, normally what we do is we talk about plugging them into the mains because the energy is never there. When we talk about like, this basic stupid witchcraft where we're taking a candle and channeling our energy into it, that's weak magic. That's why these spells can be easily wiped away. When you're talking about plugging something into the mains, that's a little different because the mains is a lot more powerful than a little Duracell bunny AAA battery, you see. Um, hello, friends. Hello. Um, I always have first sleep and second sleep too. My dreams are much more clear, vivid and meaningful with the second sleep. Interesting. Very interesting. That's normally the magical part, isn't it? Hence with all of the past 12 o'clock witch and hour, 3 o'clock in the morning, spirit visitations, all that crazy ass stuff. I'm curious why you would use Jupiter to heal cancer. I understand Jupiter is a planet of expansion, so could you elaborate? Yes, I will. Mercury... Uh, Mars, destructive, you need to destroy that cancer. Chemotherapy is very Mars, yeah? It's a very Mars approach. Destruction, destroying, operations where you cut something out of someone and throw it away to the incinerator to be burnt. What happens after that? The tissue needs to grow back. Jupiter is about building. It's often associated with business and stuff like that, but in reality, what that means is it's building. You need to build a business is a structure, is an organisation. People will confuse the Mercury and Jupiter because Mercury, communication, and to a certain extent, very structured as well. And Jupiter, commanding, constructive. Mercury and Jupiter together, great building blocks for building anything, whether it's good or bad. So with cancer healings that I've done when I used to teach, and I've done this numerous times, it works a treat. I can't physically start feeding cancer patients random shit when they're on chemotherapy and stuff like that. Therefore, the herbal medicine side of things is normally out. Also, if they're on the other side of the world, it's also very difficult to transport potions and the like. So what I have done is I've taught people basic candle magic, which involves attaching Mars to a Mars flame, lamp or candle, and get Mars to do a specific thing. Kill the cancer, destroy it, burn it away, okay? Permanent energy supply from Mars, because flames pull in energy and then release it, don't they? Jupiter, I've done the same thing, where you've got a Jupiterian candle, okay? I even make it blue. I make the Mars one red and the Jupiter one blue because the Kabbalists will love it, right? And the witches that love correspondences will also love it, right? Chris probably wouldn't. He do the red candle for both of them because he's got to be difficult. Um, <laughs> not that he'd use this approach anyway, but still, if we're going for a basic planetary because you wanted to understand Jupiter, building, that tissue needs to grow back. Nature doth abhor a vacuum. You need to grow. If you do not grow back, you're going to be sickly. I know someone that had a throat cancer and they had to have all of that completely ripped out. They looked like a corpse. You could see into there. Oh, it was creeping. But that tissue grafting and stuff needs to grow back. That's very Jupiterian. That's very building, you see. Two, you need to understand all of the aspects of what's going on and work with them. Now, the biggest spells and workings that I've seen that you want super success with Obviously, from the beginner's perspective, you want to work with all seven planets for this thing. But people don't talk about that. Because what do the other planets have to offer? They all have something. Okay, 
Cancer Workings, Mars, Jupiter, Stereotypical. But, okay, you're grafting skin on someone because of their throat cancer. You want this to heal, yeah, but you want it to heal pretty, like, yeah? You want it to be good. You know, you want to look, you want that beauty in there, don't you? Venus, some would say, go to Venus for the cosmetics and stuff. You also have to think about, well, this is a person, the psyche of the person, psychology, mental health, they're going through a nasty ordeal, right? So what planets are you going to associate with that? How are you going to help that communication? All of these things. Every planet is in everything, okay? Every disease, disease get ascribed to certain planets, but that is not 100% accurate because they're they are a part of the big machine we call creation and the big machine we call creation is separated out into these planets apart from the stuff that ain't because there's a bit too above the pay grade this is the last one because we've got to go do consultations now thank you it's funny i was just thinking about pluto right before you said don't go playing with pluto yeah there we go so i think that's it chris is there anything else you want to say no at the end of the day go back to that kind of cabalistic tree of life will always give you that visual reminder of where something needs balancing you know the last bit to kind of add to that is you know the obvious is jupiter to balance something you're about to do damage with with mars you can see it in those two pillars of balancing those two pillars in the Witchcraft Live Facebook group, I did a video about this and I got a sword out and I explained how to correctly hold a sword. The power comes from the martial hand. It's doing the hacking, but the balance and the clever techniques that you use come from the Jupiterian hand because Jupiter is in charge of Mars in the hierarchy. If Mars was left to you know, basically do its thing, and then you would have some kind of warlike, incredibly intelligent, but vicious warlike person who wants to take over. And remember, when you have an empire, it takes an emperor to rule the empire. That's why you'll get a lot of empires that have great warlords and stuff that start them off, but then they all fizzle out because they don't have someone that's capable of commanding, that Jupiterian king emperor type, okay? There are many mysteries that can be explained with Kabbalistic planetary magic, planetary magic in general, whatever you want to call it. And I'd love to talk about it at some point in the future. Much like when we talk about crucifying Jesus on the Kabbalistic tree of life, that's a mystery in itself. But we've run out of time now, so I can't talk about that. Oh, shame. Bye.